I think all of us creatives dream of one day designing our own studio that's big and bright and has room for all of our favorite things. Well, today I visit the home of Lisa Graves in beautiful Bob Cajun where she made that very dream a reality. Let's visit her studio together. Hi, my name is Lisa Graves. Welcome to my studio, which is Kortha Weaving. We are situated in Bob Cajun and I teach beginner weavers how to hand weave on floor looms. And today I would like to give you a tour of my studio. This whole studio is about 30 by 30 feet and it is a loft above our garage. The first part I want to show you is my workspace. It was important that I had a comfortable space to do my work. And my, the best feature is that this countertop is three feet deep. So tons of room to have books and binders and notebooks out. And that means all of these cupboards under here are actually three feet deep as well. So I love all this extra storage. Most of these cupboards up here is sort of ugly. I'm not gonna show you, uh, but a lot of it is books and binders. Moving down, this is my sewing station. So this table was designed to be its own separate piece of furniture. So it actually pulls out, it's on industrial casters. And this is for, if I was working on a quilting project or something that was really large and I need some extra space, I can wheel this whole piece out to a work table and then I'll have lots of room. Or sometimes if you had something big and it needs to slip behind, I, I can pull this table out. So this is where my sewing machine lives. My serger lives behind it. Also a, a little space for a, a little quick ironing spot as well, if you need to do that. Moving on is, this is all my open storage. So I did a lot of research when I was planning this studio and a lot of fiber artists told me that it was really important that they have open storage to see all the fibers they have. That way you don't forget about stuff and you can always look for motivation in the stuff you already own. So the all the shelves are adjustable. The first two are all for weaving and my students normally will use 2-8 cotton. So it's here, easy, accessible. And then down here I have extra supplies like shuttles and bobbins. This next row here is mostly spinning fibers. This next one over here is spinning and knitting. And I like to keep my projects in these little shoe bins. And the last one is just extra stuff. And you've got some spinning wheels. I do, so I spin as well. Um, this is a Lendrum. <laughs> this quirky little guy right here is a Merlin tree hitchhiker. And it's the sort of the cheesiest looking little wheel, but I love it. It is so fun. Uh, this is my newest one, which is a Magicraft Suzy Pro, and it is like spinning on butter. I love her. So this corner here, I really needed a pegboard to hang quilting rules, rulers off. So this part's more quilting. Here I've got some temples, uh, small reeds for table looms, uh, different shuttles. This right here I made myself. Uh, from Ikea, you can buy wine, these wine stands or wine holder. This is actually three put together and it's the perfect solution for fitting in all these long awkward bits that we seem to accumulate as weavers. So I have reeds, leaf sticks, warp sticks, extra beater bars. Uh, yeah, perfect. And I put it all in this crate at the bottom so it keeps it all secure. So I, I love this for storage. I wanted to tell you about this counter. This counter was a complete afterthought. So when we had the space ready, but we hadn't put any of the, the cupboards in, I invited guild members to sort of give me suggestions on where they thought things should go. And one of my friends had actually suggested that we should put um, some sort of cubby or something along here for students to be able to put their purse and shoes in. And, and that idea really did morph <laughs> into this huge countertop. And I love it. I don't know how I would have survived without having this huge long countertop. It's great for storage. I love that it's countertop height so I can do uh, any cutting cutting work I need to do. Uh, you can even weave, weave right on table looms right on it. It's a comfortable height. 
and so much storage. So mostly in here is all quilting stuff. If there's any quilters out there, you know how much space you need for it. This is a Strauch drum carter. It's the double wide one and I love it. And it fits perfect on this counter. It's actually quite heavy and difficult to move around. So it's nice that it has sort of a, a permanent place to live here. This is the Shat Eris Tapestry Loom. And I bought this specifically to do unit four in the OHS Master Weaving Program. I love this loom so much. It really made the unit bearable to complete. complete. And uh, Shat has amazing customer service. I did have a little bit of problems and they were amazing. So I highly, highly recommend this loom. Uh, I like to keep extra lee sticks and warp sticks in, a, in this pretty vase. This is a cutting mat area. I like to always have a bit of foam in case I have to pin something down to dry or set. When I'm not working on it, this loom lives here. This is the Louette Jane 40, uh, which is an eight shaft table loom. I love this loom. It's actually what I would consider portable because I can lift this myself. It's only about 20 pounds and it folds up. Love this loom. Uh, this is actually a heat press for, I guess, making t-shirts. And this is uh, a Dorothy. I'm sure most of you know what this old clunker is. <laughs> Dorothy table loom. She's a four shaft. And uh, you might not all know about this, but there is a conversion set that you can buy. So instead of having the levers here that you sort of have to punch down like a, a toaster, uh, you can actually purchase this conversion kit and uh, it makes it very smooth to use. All right. This is sort of my favorite corner. This is what I call the nest chair. And uh, normally my dog would be in it. This is where I store all my reeds. In uh, this is a Leclerc reed stand. This is my warping board. I love it. I had it custom made for me. I made sure it was really beefy and strong. Um, it holds 12 and a half yards, and it's. I made sure it's the perfect height for me. So sometimes students, if they're too tall or too short, it's not right. I also have a little Leclerc warping mill. And when I'm teaching, I want to make sure if I have two students, one's going to use the board, one's going to use the warping mill, then everyone learns uh, the pros and cons to them and maybe decide what they'd like to buy when they start weaving. This is my winding center. It's not much to look at, but it is very efficient. So I had um, a piece of wood installed in, in the sill of the window because I wanted it this exact height. And everything's here. So an electric bobbin winder, then I have two manual ones, this is for left-handed people and right-handed people. My Swift, my ball winder, thread cone. Oh, this is my favorite tip. Save your mushroom containers because they fit bobbins perfect. So you can have a whole bunch of these around your studio and your bobbins aren't rolling around everywhere. This is something I've had for years. Uh, it's a little, I guess the thread catcher. You could easily make one yourself. Uh, it has sand and a little sort of like a grippy thing here. And then it just lives beside my, my station here. So if I'm trimming off an end, then I can just throw it right in the bucket. This is a Leclerc. I'm not exactly what it's called, but I know you can't buy it anymore. I believe it's for making skeins with, but what I use it for is if I'm working with wool or something that's come off a skein, and I want to weave with it, I have to put it on a bobbin. Normally, you would have to put it on a swift, roll it onto a ball, and then from the ball, wind a bobbin with it. But this skein, I can just pull apart and put on here, and I can wind the bobbin right from this skein. So it saves a whole step of putting it in a ball. And balls are sort of tricky to wind a bobbin from because they bounce all over the place. This is my chalkboard. Um, I love it. I had it made for me. This is a piece of, there's a countertop company that makes countertops, but they also make wipe boards and chalk boards. So it's actually just a really, really thin and it com comes in this size, four by eight feet. And my contractor said, well, how small are we making it? No, no, it's gonna be four by eight. I want it big. Uh, so they mounted it on plywood and framed it for me. So it's easy 
easy for me to be able to teach my students who would be here at the table. Um, if I had to draw a diagram or when we get more into drafting, then I can use this little grid right here. This is, um, he's folded up right now. So this is the Ashford 16 shaft table loom. I think it's a 24 is the, the width. Um, he's pretty big and it's not one I would actually consider portable. It's about 40 pounds. It does fold up really nice. It gets, it, the footprint once it's folded up is, is actually, you know, it's like right out of the way here. Uh, but I can't actually lift it or move it myself. I need uh, someone else to help me. So it might be something to keep in mind, uh, but I do, I really love this loom. I love having 16 shafts and uh, I love how beefy the, the levers are. These are my work tables. They're from Ikea. There's two of them. Also, and I'm gonna point out my floor is vinyl and I did a lot of research to find out what would be the most durable. Uh, it was affordable. It sort of has a rubber feeling to it. Um, and it doesn't, it doesn't scratch easily. And if it does, I made sure the colors had this washed out look so it wasn't noticeable if it did scratch. So I can fully drag any loom or anything I want. I don't have to baby my floor. So I really, really love that. So these tables are from Ikea. They're solid. I can pull them apart, rearrange them. And another thing I have is I've purchased bed risers, which are sort of these steps that I can raise the table up for maybe a table loom or cutting for quilting, then I have that option as well. So these three looms across here are my student looms. They're all Eclairic fannies. Uh, the ones on the ends are 27 inch wide. This middle one is a 36. Uh, the reason I chose these looms is uh, I'm finding that on, in Ontario, they are the most popular. They're the most affordable. And when you're beginning, chances are this is the type of loom you're gonna have and the counterbalances are really easy to use. And also Leclerc is just in Quebec. They're still in business. It's really easy to buy any parts that you might need. And these are affordable and you can find them for free or a couple hundred dollars. Uh, so I, I think this is what I would recommend my students to, to use. So chances are this will be their first loom. The looms I use, so this is my newest floor loom. This is a Luet Spring 1, and it is a 12 shaft. This is my bigger floor loom. So this is a Luet Hollandia. They don't make this anymore. It's been in, replaced by the Delta, uh, and it's quite a lot larger than the Spring. And it is eight shafts. And I think it's the 45-ish width. The way the, the Louette countermarshes work is they are, it's called a parallel countermarsh. So there's one cord that sort of snakes its way all around and it will work to raise or, or lower each of the, the shafts. You also notice around my room, uh, I have these little bins that are on rolly wheels. I typically have one that goes with any project that I'm working on. So I can quickly, if I have something out, I can quickly just tuck it all in and I can wheel it around to where I'm working. And also my students will both get their own so that they can keep all their supplies organized when they need it. So for my, for my classes, it, they are normally about a week long. It takes about five days to learn how to weave from scratch. I usually have about two students, but I think I could comfortably fit up to four. I have three looms and then we could put another student on, um, on a table loom. What was your decide to start weaving? Uh, I didn't know weaving existed and I didn't know spinning existed. And I met a friend on the GO train who introduced me to spinning and we went for lessons together. And she just told me one day that we were going to learn how to weave. And I thought, okay. And I knew nothing about it. I had no idea that people did it. And I was just at a point in my life where I needed a break. And we went and learned how to weave for a week. I didn't know what I was doing. I just was enjoying sort of a vacation for my little kids. And when I threw that shuttle, I knew there was there wasn't anything else I ever wanted to do ever. I absolutely became obsessed with weaving. Could you make a living without weaving? I think I could, but for now I'm choosing not to. I'm mostly focusing on working on the OHS Master Weaver program, 
a lot of my time is just spent on my own education. I do teach uh, for about half the year, so I like to teach in the spring and the fall. I don't teach during the summers because I have little kids, so I'm home with them. And I don't enjoy teaching in the winter because of the weather. Uh, people do travel from all over Ontario to come here and I don't ever want to have to worry about bad weather. Do you have a favorite room? I think my favorite loom is whatever one I'm currently working on. Uh, right now, I think my favorite loom is the Louette Jane 40 uh, because there's no tie-ups. It's just nice. She's an eight shaft and she's portable. And I, right now I'm just doing a lot of sampling, sampling and experimenting. So it's fitting exactly what I need. Do you have a favorite thing you like to do? Um, if I was weaving something that wasn't a sample, it's probably going to be a tea towel. I wish I had something more exciting to say, uh, but I just think tea towels are great. It doesn't matter if you screw them up. They're great to give away as gifts or hostess gifts, and I just think you can never have too many tea towels. Do you have a favorite structure? Okay, so my favorite structure is usually the one I'm currently working on, and right now that is Crackle. And I, I think Crackle's got a bad rap because it's so ugly, but it's not, it's so fascinating. And I think my goal right now is to make Crackle look beautiful. And I think if you have a four shaft loom, get a Crackle book and put it on because it is amazing. <laughs> Did you to warp front to back or back to front? I always warp back to front. It's how I was taught. It's how I teach, and uh, I just think, for me personally, I have the most success with that system. If you could buy one more thing from the studio, what would it be? I am very grateful for every single piece of equipment that I own and use, and most of them I just want to add are secondhand. They're, it's rare that I've bought any pieces new. All I want right now is books. And if you're a weaver trying to learn, you will know that these books are not in print anymore and they are hard to come by and you need to join guilds or have weaving friends that hopefully you can borrow them from. So that's my quest right now is to acquire as many of these books that I need. Oh, it's really hard. You put so much into some of these pieces that they just feel like they're a part of you. Um, I think one of my favorites right now, can I show you? Yeah. This is a blanket that I made in double weave because it was too wide for me to weave it. And it is a twill, a straight draw twill. And uh, it was fun to just, these are just, I designed it randomly. So all of these stripes, I just, picked them up as I went and it is 4-8 cotton and I love the drape it is so heavy and cozy and it is cotton so you can just throw it in the washer and the dryer which fits my lifestyle with dogs and kids just fine. So the interesting thing about Lisa's dream studio is that it's centered around education which is really interesting because when speaking with Lisa the overriding theme is always education and her thirst for knowledge that it came out over and over again. Lisa wants to know everything she can about weaving. And in fact, she told me that sometimes she gets teary when she thinks about all the things, all the weaving things she won't be able to learn in her lifetime because weaving is so vast. You can never learn everything. The more you learn, the more you realize you don't know. So it's so interesting to see that her dream studio perfectly reflects her personality. I loved it. If you guys want to see more studio tours, uh, for one, please subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you'll be notified when I make another upload. But also, feel free to reach out to me. I would love to tour your studio. You know, whether it's a little tiny bedroom with a loom squeezed in or a huge studio like Lisa's. I mean, every studio has value and I personally love looking at any studio, whether it's big or small, and I'm sure you do too. You can actually contact me if you look on our YouTube channel in the about section, our email list is listed there. So please feel free to reach out and contact me. I would love to visit your studio. 
Right now, I'm only visiting studios in Ontario, but I do hope to visit studios worldwide, to be honest, eventually. So thanks for tuning in and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.